We're going to start with the tubular, uh, long tail tubular cast on. And uh, first thing you need to do is, uh, is make a slip knot. And to make a slip knot, we make, create a shape of a pretzel like this. So this is the ball end and this is the tail end. So you uh, create a pretzel shape like that. And this is my, this is the tail. And then you pick up this strand right here and that's your first stitch. And then you hold it. So this is the tail end over my index finger and then the ball end um, over my thumb. And then uh, we start casting on using the long tubular cast on. Okay, so this counts as, a, as the first stitch. Next, you're gonna put the needle over underneath both strands and bring it up over the thumb strand only. And that's your first stitch, uh, second stitch. And then you're gonna put it under the thumb strand and over the index finger and bring it from under both strands. And then you continue this, this way. It's a very similar movement. You're sort of going under the opposite strand. And if you notice, your stitches already have the appearance of knit pearl. So the first stitch will count it as knit. So the second one, if you see, it looks like a pearl stitch. Then knit, pearl, knit, pearl. And you continue until you have the necessary number of stitches. And you'll end with a pearl stitch. So I cast on, um, um, I don't know, about 56, 60 stitches. Uh, you cast on as many as you need. Um, and uh, uh, there are two ways of um, continuing with this. One is um, uh, working in the round. And it is a bit tricky because these cast on stitches tend to want to dance around the needle, um, the <clears throat> knitting needles and the cables. Um, but uh, not to worry, uh, we can deal with that. So you do your best, try to make sure they're not uh, twisted. So it's one way to make sure that is that um, see the these are the tops of the stitches and then these bumpy ones are the bottoms. So you want to make sure that the bumps are in the bottom. What when you spread out your stitches? Um, I like doing. The long tail cast on starting the first uh, tubular round, tubular row round in the round, so so that I don't have to seam anything later on, and it just seems to make sense. So this is it, and I just bring it to this one, and there is a chance that my stitches may have got twisted, but um, we can deal with that 
when we get to that. So the tubular rounds mean um, you knit one stitch and slip the next one and then on the following row you slip the, the stitches that you worked and um, knit knit or purl the stitches that you slipped. It depends on what method you're using. So for working in the round, we're going to knit the first. We're going to knit the first stitch. So we knit the first stitch and since the second stitch is the uh, it, the second stitch is a purl stitch, we slip it but we slip the purl stitches with the yarn in front. And then knit the next one, slip the purl stitch with the yarn in front. Knit, slip with the yarn in front. It's a bit tight because my stitches are, I don't think I cast on enough stitches. So you continue this way until the end of round. So I finished the first tubo around and I got lucky. Um, my stitches um, are not twisted. So this is what it looks like. Uh, all these bumps in the bottom or on the inner side of the needle. That's how it's supposed to look. If you notice that when you finish the round, um, you you have twisted your stitches, I would just um, untwist them right here. I wouldn't undo it. I would just um, sort of twist over in whichever direction it is supposed to, um, right here in the first tubular round. Um, it's not an ideal way to deal with it. But um, it works. That's how I do it. You know, when I'm on a deadline and I need to do it, I just go ahead and untwist it right here. I just twist it either this way or the other way, um, however way it needs to be untwisted. <clears throat> and then continue with the second round of the tubular uh, knitting. The second round, the second tubular round, we reverse it. So in the previous round we uh, knitted the first stitch and slipped the second one here. We're going to slip the first one and work uh, the next stitch. So the first stitch is a knit stitch so I'm going to slip it but with the yarn in the back. And then the next stitch is a purl stitch. It was previously slipped with the yarn in front. This time I'm gonna um, work it. Purl. Slip the knit stitch with the yarn in back. Purl. Oops. Yep. Slip with the yarn in back. Purl. Slip the knit stitch. Purl. Slip the knit stitch, purl, and this is the second round. The reason it's called a tubular, uh, the reason it's called tubular rounds, is because um, when you work the first stitch and then slip the next stitch, and then you alternate and uh, slip the first stitch, um, uh, work the second stitch, and every alternating stitch. You sort of create, if you keep going like this uh, for a couple more rounds, you will notice that there is a whole of space um, between, um, you have like a hollow space forming there. That's why it's called tubular. It sort of starts looking like a tube in here. It's like double knitting, so to speak, where you just work, you know, um, every other stitch, uh, alternating at every other row. 
I finished my second tubular round and if you notice it's starting to look like a nice edging of, um, of what you're gonna knit. Um, I would double check again to make sure your stitches haven't twisted. Um, this time it's much easier to check because you have two uh, tubular rounds. And then, um, and then uh, you continue with your regular ribbing. Uh, if you're doing one by one rib, you just continue working a uh, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. If you'd like the tubular uh, edging to be a little thicker, a little rounder, you can work uh, another repeat of um, two tubular rounds. So knitting one, stitching the purl stitches, and then in the following one, slipping the knit stitches and purling. And that will give you four tubular rounds. In essence, it's just half as many um, rounds. So, and if you're working two by two rib, then you'll have to rearrange the stitches. And um, um, that's a different tutorial. So after a few um, rounds of ribbing, this is what the um, tubular edging, the tubular cast on looks like. Um, I really like how it looks. It kind of has a professional finish to it, professional look to it. The only um, problem you may have it is uh, where you um, where the beginning of a uh, round is, there might be some loose strands. Um, and that's due to um, the connection stretching out a little bit. And this is an easy to fix problem. So if you um, look where the strand is coming from, so this is the very first tubal around and uh, this is where it joined and if you notice where it's going if you pull on it you can tell which where it is connected so it's right here it's connected to the stitch you can um, tighten it by pulling on that and then sort of re um, distribute that slack that loose strand around the surrounding stitches. If you can connect it to the next one here, that's fine. But I don't think, because it's the first one, you can go this way. But uh, this is how you can um, fix that just by spreading it out, spreading that looseness out to the following, to the stitches that are connected. And there you go. That looks much better.